topic is mechanics of intertwined tillage tool. There are three process parameters that are involved in it. Your first one is your prime mower. This prime mower is usually a tractor. Then there are soil particles in which your prime mower operates. And there is one tillage tool. Fine. So this tillage tool, it is usually attached by means of three point linkage system of a tractor. Fine. If this tillage tool is something like this, I mean, it is placed in a vertical direction. This is known as vertical tillage tool. But here you can see this tillage tool is inclined at some angle. Suppose this angle is theta. Fine. So it is placed at some inclined direction. So that is known as inclined tillage tool, which is today's topic. So this inclined tillage tool is having three parameters involved in it. First one, the tillage tool that is inclined at some angle with the direction of travel, that is known as inclined tillage tool. It is having another property that it usually operates in a straight line or in a horizontal direction. And third one is that and this tillage tool operates at a very slow speed. You must be aware of the fact that most of the tillage operations are carried out at a very slow speed. Fine. So what actually happens when this tillage tool moves forward, it exerts certain amount of force on these soil particles. Right. So soil particles comes in contact with the tillage tool. So the first process parameter that is known as soil metal friction. What happens? The soil exerts force. What soil will do? Soil will exert equal and opposite force according to Newton's third law of motion. Right? So when it exerts the force, there is a kind of shear, uh, shear failure plane that is formed that is actually responsible for the crushing of the soil. This is shear failure plane. And third one, what happens? This soil, when it interacts with the soil, when it interacts with the tillage tool, what happens? This soil gets accumulated on the working surface of the tillage tool. So what happens? Then soil comes, it starts exerting the force on the soil surface. So there will be some sort of acceleration force as well. Acceleration force. And fourth one, when this tillage tool moves forward, these soil particles, they exert certain resistance because they are also in certain resistance that is called as cutting resistance. Cutting resistance. So these four parameters actually govern the movement of the tillage tool through the soil. This is the tillage tool which operates in the forward direction, fine. So, when it operates in the forward direction, if you remember the previous lecture of interaction of the tool wedge with the soil, you must remember that there was one fissure plane that created uh, the prism-like blocks. And these blocks usually come on the top of the working surface of the tillage tool. So, what this is, this is nothing but soil block. Fine. So, I have mentioned that there are four parameters that are involved in it. I have mentioned the parameters here. First one is the acceleration force. But before that, this soil block must be having certain weight. That weight, suppose it is acting in the downward direction denoted by W. Fine. Then there is acceleration force. This acceleration force must be acting at some uh, angle. Why? Because the soil particles, when it strikes, it usually strikes at some angle. Okay. So I am going to write, for example, like this denoted by B. B is the acceleration force. Fine. Now, there is a shear failure plane. When this tillage tool operates forward, what happens on this surface? There is shear failure surface. So, that is usually denoted by C into F. This C is the cohesion force between the soil particles. This F, this is the area of this forward failure surface. Fine. So, this soil particle, it must generate a shear force. It also generates a normal force. Fine. This normal force is usually denoted by N1. Fine. As you are aware of the fact that coefficient of friction is force divided by normal force. So this normal force is uh, also generating a force. That force is equal to mu into N1. So this will be mu into N1. Fine. Next is soil metal friction. When the soil interacts with this tillage tool, it also results in soil metal friction. That force is usually denoted by mu dash N0. 
So what is the difference between mu and mu dash? Mu is the soil soil friction. Mu dash is the soil metal friction. So it also generates a normal force that is denoted by N0. This tool is lifted at an angle of alpha to lift angle, fine. And here this angle is beta, fine. So these are the forces that are usually acting on the soil block that actually uh, occurs on the top of the tillage tool. These are the forces that are acting on the tillage tool. First one will be your normal force that is denoted by N0, fine. There will be one soil metal friction force that will oppose the motion of the tillage tool. It is denoted by mu dash N0 because this is mu dash, soil metal friction. Mu that is soil soil friction, right? So there is one more force that is given by Sahane, S-O-E-H-N-E. He said that soil also offers a resistance that is known as soil cutting resistance and it is denoted by K into B. There K is pure cutting resistance of the soil per unit width and B is the width of the tool, tillage tool. Fine. So there will be one more force that is denoted by FD that is draft force that is required to pull the uh, tillage tool in the forward direction and there will be also certain vertical reactions of the soil. Fine. So these are the forces that are acting on the tillage tool inclined at angle alpha. So if we will take the horizontal forces, horizontal forces that are acting on this tillage tool. So forces that are acting on the right hand side that will be taken as positive and those forces which are acting on the left hand side that will be taken as negative. So this FD, this is acting in the, this direction. So FD equals to. So firstly, we will resolve this. If we have to resolve this mu dash NO, it will be having horizontal component like this and it will be having vertical component. This horizontal component will be mu dash N0 cos of alpha and vertical component will be mu dash N0 sin of alpha. So here we are talking about only horizontal force that is acting on the left hand side. So this will be equal to mu dash N0 cos of alpha. Similarly, we can do for KB that will be plus K into B cos of alpha. Then we have to resolve this normal force. You must understand that if you are having a normal force like this, you are going to resolve it like this. So this will be N0 cos of alpha. This will be N0 sine of alpha. This is the normal procedure. But whenever you are having the normal force, these terminologies reverse their direction. That means this will be sine and this will be cos. So here we are talking only about these horizontal forces. So this will be plus n0 into sine of alpha, right? After that, we have to calculate the specific resistance of the soil that is denoted by R asterisk. This specific resistance is equal to the amount of the draft force that is required to pull the tillage tool minus the soil cutting resistance that is Kb cos of alpha. This term, this is soil cutting resistance. It is important only in three conditions. First condition, when your soil contains the solid stones, fine, or it contains stubbles. Or the third condition, when the distillage tool, it is working surface is very dull or blur. It is not able to penetrate properly. It is not able to cut the soil. Only then it will become significant. So this R asterisk will be equal to, so if you are going to put the value, this will be mu dash N0 cos of alpha plus N0 sine of alpha. So what will happen to KB? KB will cancel this and you will get this equation. So if we will calculate N0 from this, so N0 will be equal to R asterisk divided by mu dash cos of alpha plus sine of alpha. So this will be the, your first reaction. So I am going to highlight it like this. Fine. So, so now we are going to take this diagram and we are going to analyze horizontal forces that are acting here, fine. So we are going to use the same procedure. So you will get N0 sine of alpha, when you are going to resolve this, plus mu dash N0 cos of alpha, that will be equal to mu N1 cos of beta plus N1 sine of beta plus Cf cos of beta plus B cos of beta. 
you have to remember only one thing these forces you are going to resolve normally but these normal forces n1 and n0 you have to do, uh, resolve in the opposite direction fine when you are going to solve this a little bit so you are going to n0 you will take n0 as common so you will get sine of alpha plus mu dash cos of alpha that will be equal to here you are going to take cos beta uh, as common so you will get cf plus b plus here you are going to take n1 as common and you will get sine of beta plus mu cos of beta fine so in the previous one you got the value of n0 fine so if you are going to put the value of n0 here you will get the value of n1 right so n1 you will get r asterisk minus cf plus b into cos of beta whole divided by sine of beta plus mu cos of beta fine so this will be the value of n1 so you got the value of both normal forces n0 and n1 so earlier we have focused on horizontal forces now there will be vertical forces if you are going to resolve the vertical forces you will get w plus b sine of beta here you have to remember whenever you are going to analyze these forces you have to take angle alpha whenever you are going to analyze these forces or forces these forces you have to analyze, uh, take angle beta fine so you will get plus cf sine of beta minus n1 cos of beta plus mu n1 sine of beta plus mu dash n0 sine of alpha minus n0 cos of alpha equal to 0 fine when you are going to resolve a little bit you will get w plus cf plus b common of sine of beta minus n1 with a bracket of cos of beta minus mu sine of beta minus n0 cos of alpha minus mu dash sine of alpha equal to 0 this equation you have to remember right why because we are having both the value of n0 and n1 and earlier we have calculated the value of n0 and n1 so what we are going to do we will put the value here so these are the equation which we got till now value of n0 n1 and this equation so what we are going to do we will put the value of n0 and n1 in this equation fine so this will be w minus n0 will put the value of r asterisk divided by sine of alpha plus mu dash cos of alpha into bracket cos of alpha minus mu dash sine of alpha fine minus we'll put the value of n1 as well so this will be r asterisk minus cf plus b into cos of beta whole divided by this one sine of beta minus sorry plus mu cos of beta this will be kept in bracket and its own term that what that was this cos of beta minus mu sine of beta plus this term cf plus b into sine of beta this will be equal to 0 right you are going to solve the equation you will get something like this fine so there is a term this this whole term it is denoted by z this is a constant fine and these terms if you will see mu cf mu cf this will get cancelled with this right this mu this will get cancelled with this so what you will get in return will be w minus r asterisk into z plus so cf cos square beta and cf sin square beta so this will be cf because sin square beta plus cos square beta will be 1 plus similarly b sin square beta b cos square beta sin square beta plus cos square beta is 1 so this will be b whole divided by this term sin of beta plus mu cos of beta right so you'll get this term and if you are going to solve it a little bit you will get r asterisk as w by z plus cf plus b in bracket whole divided by z into 
sin of beta plus mu cos of beta. So this is the equation of the specific resistance of the soil. This is what you have to derive. Fine. This specific resistance of the soil. It depends upon the weight of the soil block, constant of proportionality, the cohesion force, the area of the failure surface uh, area. This will be acceleration force and certain angles. Here, if you oh, this will be equal to zero. So you will get this equation, right? 